Good morning everybody. Today we're going to talk about uh, slowing down your video. Do you need a fast camera? Do you need an expensive camera? If you have a camera that only shoots in a standard frame rate, so 24p or 30p, can you get really nice looking slow motion? Some of us are using things like iPhones or your Android phones and I know that my iPhone for instance can shoot in a slow motion mode so you actually get 120 frames or the iPhone 8 and iPhone 10 can shoot 1080 in 240 frames and I'm sure that's going to go even more as newer devices come out. But if you don't have that, can you still get that nice cinematic look that you get by slowing down a clip, slowing down a clip with a camera that doesn't have a slow motion feature? Let's take a look at that. Okay, so I shot some of this footage here and I got Final Cut. We're going to do this all in Final Cut Pro. We were at the bike show. It was a good opportunity for me to frame things and get things ready to possibly slow them down. I found some clips here. And these clips, of course, were taken during the show. I'm going to use this one here, for instance. One second, but one second of footage. And I'm going to bring this down into my timeline. We're going to zoom that in a bit. If you want to slow this down just standardly, you'll see, standardly, I don't even know if that's a word. Normally, if you just wanted to slow this down, you'd click on this little, like little speedometer up here, and you'd say slow, right? I want 50%, 25%, 10%. Now, just so you guys know, if you go down and set this to normal, which is what I usually do, you'll get the normal timeline. And then if you grab just above the green bar here, you can actually speed this up or slow this down and you can do it in those perfect little increments that you want okay but for us today I'm gonna actually slow this down let's do 25 percent now because I did 25 percent I get a clip that's six seconds long and I really don't want six seconds long so let's find three seconds right there now normally if you see this what happens is you see that it seems really choppy and if you look frame by frame so one frame the second frame exactly the same as the first frame, right? You see, look at all that. It's just, there's massive repetition of frames, which is why it looks like it's kind of jittery and chunky. Now, a few things you can do up here is under this speedometer, you can go to video quality. So you'll see normal, right? I'm gonna click on the clip. You'll see normal, and then you'll see frame blending, and frame blending, a little different. So what it does is it takes the previous frame and then a new frame and then this one and it blurs these two together. So between frames, you see it right there? You get this blur between the two frames as it tries to go through. Now, if that's something fast and you want like a motion blur effect, this can actually probably look all right. And it definitely looks a little smoother in some instances than just having it set to normal. But here's the one that we all want, this is the one that if we have a camera that shoots in a 30 frame or a 24 frame that we would love to slow down. We're going to come in here and you'll see this lovely guy called Optical Flow. Now be aware, Optical Flow takes a little bit of time and what Optical Flow actually does is it recreates new frames. It's magic. It really is. It's some kind of magic. So I'm going to go Optical Flow here and you'll actually see, first off, that you get this analyzing for optical flow. Now this part can take a little bit of time, so beware. Now this is only a two second clip, so it's not. And then it's gonna render. So there we go. And if you look now, you'll, you'll actually see it has tried to build new frames through that whole segment there. Okay, so we're gonna play that back. Now that looks way better. And of course, if you decide that's not long enough, if you stretch this out, you'll actually see that it starts to reanalyze again so that it can rebuild new frames and it'll have to render. There it goes and, and off we go. Few things to be aware of. Whenever you're doing a slow on this, the more complicated, the more movement that is happening in the background, the higher chance that it's not gonna look quite right because of the fact that it's building 
these new frames and it's not going to get them. You'll see sometimes these little weird warping effects. On a shot like this, where really the only thing was moving was me, it works actually very well. So it's one of those things that if you can think out your shot and make sure that you get your camera positioned in a way that the part that is moving is very isolated, uh, this can work really well. And for me, it lets me continue to use my SLR and I'm actually using a Canon 7D to be able to get some of these really nice slow motion shots that normally I wouldn't be able to get unless I switch to a different camera. All right guys, optical flow, who knew, right? It's been around for a while. It's kind of hidden inside one of the menus. Hopefully this was good information. Hopefully it'll help you make your videos a little more cinematic or even have that video that's, oh my gosh, I wish it would have been like two seconds longer or a second longer so it matched my music well just get into that speed and slow it down you know to 80 percent and run optical flow i find that 50 percent and over if you run optical flow it looks really good once you start getting under that it really depends on the complexity of the shot i've gotten away with pulling some off that are you know 25 percent and 20 percent it looks great and other ones you're just like nope that didn't work be aware play around it's the best thing you can do play around and i'm going to leave you with that like comment subscribe do all the good stuff do it because you love it and we will see you in a couple days have a good one